This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. Like, you know, we just lost recently, this past Sunday, Judge the Army Bailey, uh, the founder of the Civil Rights Museum, also a judge like you, like yourself, and also active in movies. I mean, he did How Still Got Your Groove Back. Yeah, he didn't found the Civil Rights Museum. Why you, why you say that? Like, that's what they say in the paper. What I know. Mm -hmm. What happened with Walter Bailey, no relation to him, not his brother, but the one that owned the Lorraine Motel, had a meeting with Chuck Scruggs, myself, and Randy Wade. There were a series of them. We had it at Mr. Bobo's place, the Gay Hawk. Mm -hmm. We ate lunch, and we came up with the idea of turning it into a museum. Okay. A.W. Willis, the late attorney, did all the paperwork, got everything signed. Then he found out he had terminal cancer, and he just collapsed. Uh, not more than two or three weeks before he died and attorney Bailey was asked to file the papers. Hmm. So what about the story they say he was on a beer run and he ran into Walter Bailey and he told him that he needed to save the, the Lorraine from demolition? That's not true at all? No, nah, I sat across the table from Walter Bailey like I am with you. Uh -huh. Chuck Scruggs with WDIA was there. Randy Wade was there and I was there. And we hashed it out what to do with the museum. Mm -hmm. He was going to sell the thing and have it torn down or what could he do. So the idea of making a museum out of it came to the forefront. And we enlisted A.W. Willis's assistance. And he got all the paperwork together, everything signed. It just needed to be filed. Okay. And so you said the judge, Bailey, he really did was just file the papers. He office. filed the papers. He didn't do anything else? That's that, it. That's it. That's it. So why is that story? Why, why is it like, even the New York Times a little bit, they got You the, believe uh, everything you read? No, sir, I do not. Well, I was there. <laughs> so I'm just telling you about it. Do you have anything you like to say about Judge Bailey at all? He's a good man. He, he has a claim to fame in history that still is applicable to the day with some things that have been done relative to voting rights. He was beneficiary of a U.S. Supreme Court ruling back in the 60s that said students could vote either where they grew up and where their parents lived or where they went to school. Mm -hmm. Well, the students at the University of California at Berkeley wound up electing the Army Bailey to their city council along with some other people approved by the student activists. Well, ultimately, when they went home for summer vacation, the local residents had a recall election. Mm -hmm. But interestingly enough, that unanimous opinion by the U.S. Supreme Court is still in effect. And one of the interesting things was is proof of where you lived or where you went to school could be by your student ID. So we note right now the Tea Party in Tennessee has had passed legislation that says your student ID is not adequate to show your eligibility to vote, and that is contrary to a unanimous U.S. Supreme Court decision that is still in full force and effect, so nobody's challenged that. It's just interesting, I guess, today's young black lawyers or those who are civilly conscious of don't think much about those things just about money and don't get too much into constitutional law because they are above it. Mm. Wow. But that is uh, one of the Army Bailey's legacies. He was a good lawyer. He was a decent judge and a fairly yeah, well-traveled. Well good lawyer. Good judge. Mm -hmm. We'll miss him. Yes, sir.